Some of the materials we're gonna be using today to accomplish the finished look of the part are some sanding sponges. We'll be starting with a 180 grit all the way up to a 400 grit. Various sanding sticks, flexible sanding sticks. Automotive sandpaper starting with 600 grit ranging all the way up to 2500 grit. Okay, so we're gonna get started now. You want to start with 180 grit paper. We're going to go real slow with this. We're just going to take our time, find the areas that have some of the larger grooves and valleys on the part. We're going to knock down those hires very lightly with this 180 grit. If it ends up being too abrasive, we're going to switch to a less abrasive sanding sponge or sandpaper. We're going to go in light circular motions over the entire part. This will start to create a lot of dust, so if you're in an environment where you can't have lots of dust, say your bedroom or something like that, I'd recommend doing this outside um, or also wearing a dust mask. This stuff is not the best thing to breathe in. So as you can see, the part is starting obviously to change slight color because of the sanding. As we start to go through all the grits here, this will get smoother. We are slightly roughing up the surface just a little bit. Um, what this will do is actually show us the areas that need more attention. This area is actually fairly smooth, but right there, it's a little hard to see. See that deeper recessed area? That actually is one of the things we might need to fill later, but we're gonna slow, slowly sand over that and see how it looks. Sometimes we don't need to worry about filling these areas. Sometimes the sandpaper will just start to smooth that over time. We might even burn through some of this primer and then touch some of the white kills primer. That's okay as long as we don't burn through both layers of primer. There's quite a few coats on here, so it shouldn't be too bad. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's actually a small imperfection on the surface. That's what sanding with the sandpaper is gonna show us are the small little pits and dips inside the part. So that's that's not too bad. That's something that can probably be filled with primer, but we're just gonna lightly sand over the entire thing with this 180 grit. Now when we start to get to the grooves, I like to make sure that I'm on an edge of the paper that's pretty crisp. The factory edge is perfectly straight, so for certain things that's useful, but because this is a little curved area, we want to make sure that we get really tight into the groove. On one section at a time, we're going to just lightly hit this. There's definitely a lot of imperfections in there, it's not super smooth. What I'll actually do is I'll take my sanding sponge and I'll bend it in half like this. It's still flexible. This actually will gets in these tight areas pretty easily, but you can also do this with sandpaper if this doesn't do the trick. This is where I'll actually apply slightly more pressure. I'll actually push into the groove and slowly pull out and we'll be able to hit that area pretty nicely. As you can see, we we're a little too abrasive here and we actually ended up sanding through the first layer of primer. Luckily, I coated this quite a few times with both primers to make sure that we wouldn't accidentally end up burning through and hitting to the other part itself. So what I'm gonna do is, because this is an area that's a little bit more sensitive, I'm gonna end up switching over to one of my flexible sanding sticks and get into that groove. That will allow me to hit this little tight area that's a little hard to see on camera. There's a little bump in there in the groove that's a little hard to knock down. So we're gonna use this flexible sanding stick here and go all along in here. These have just a thin piece of metal in there. It's a really flexible piece of metal and essentially all, all it is is there's a piece of sandpaper that's glued down to it. So you can get really tight grooves and you can also fit curves and shapes, which is kind of nice. So for certain parts that need more attention and detail, you can actually curve this to fit that part's profile and go along that part, just like that. So I'm actually just gonna try to get into this groove tightly and real, real light. This is a super fine one, so it's not gonna be absolutely perfect, but 
gets the job done for some areas are a little too hard to get with paper. So it looks okay. Um, we're gonna go over it actually with a full piece of 600. And now I'm just gonna hold the bend in my hand instead of creasing it. What that does is allows the paper to flex and fit into the groove without having like, too harsh of an edge. Sanding is definitely the longest part in finishing a part, but the reason you want to take so much time to do this is because it, everything you cast on the master part is going to show. All the, all the imperfections on your master part will show through. So fingerprints, sanding marks, all that stuff's going to show. So what our goal is, is to make sure that none of those imperfections show through on the final part. Spending the extra time now will save you hours and hours of finishing work later on it once the parts are completed because you won't have to go through those steps of sanding every individual part with those imperfections down to get them perfect. So when you make a master part, you want to make sure it's the best thing that you can possibly do as if it were a one-of-a-kind finished piece. You don't want any imperfections on the surface, so take your time with it. So slowly getting better. Not the worst, not the best, but slowly getting there. It's gonna take quite a while. It'll probably actually take me uh, over an hour or longer. Sometimes it takes days to sand parts down to final, final cut, but we're getting there. Okay, so I'm gonna be switching to the 320 grit now. This is a much finer paper. I'll start getting rid of some of those imperfection scratches from the 180 grit. As we work up progressively, this will start to look really smooth and almost glass-like. Okay, so as you can see, this makes a pretty big mess when you dry sand versus wet sand. All right, so we've gone all the way up to 320 grit. We still have quite a few grits to go. It's actually feeling pretty smooth now. I'm looking pretty good so far. I'm just gonna hit all the tight grooves really quickly all over the part just to make sure that all the imperfections that need more abrasive paper are taken care of and worn down. And then we'll switch to the 400 grit paper and we'll go from there over the entire part. So we're going to switch now to 400 grit on the sanding sponge. We've already gone through with a 180. We've gone over it with the 320. Now we're going to go over it once with the 400. So 400 is ultra smooth. There's almost no resistance when you're using the paper. Again, I'm going very light. I'm not applying any, really any pressure. I'm just letting all the grid do the work on the sanding sponge. Light circular motions, just holding the, the paper just barely against the surface. This is what gives you those super smooth results. So we're gonna get that going, speed this up. So what we're going to do next is we're going to actually sand down this again, but this time we're going to wet sand it. Okay, so we got our water bottle here. This is a simple squeeze bottle I use all the time. I also have just a regular spray bottle that works really well for this. What we're going to do is we're going to put some water in the tray. Okay, so now that we got some water in the tray, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our part. And go from the top all the way down, just like if you were washing a car. You want to start from the very top, water down. Looks pretty good. It's super smooth now. There's not really many areas that I would consider as imperfections, but what we basically do next is we go over this part again. We double check to make sure that everything is as smooth as we want it to be. I'm seeing a couple of little tight spots still on the bottom here. There's a weird geometry there, so it doesn't 
necessarily give you the smoothest area. It's really hard to sand it. Um, but that's okay. What we're going to do next is we're going to actually go over the entire thing again with both paper and sponges if needed just to really make sure it's super smooth. It already feels perfect. It's like a really nice polished part already, but uh, we're going to move forward. We're going to wet some 600 sandpaper. Okay, so I went over everything really quickly with some of the 600 sandpaper, some of the 600 grit sandpaper, wet sanded it. And I'm actually finding some other small imperfections on the surface that I didn't see before, but that's why you do this process is so you can find them. It's a really, really subtle thing that you probably wouldn't even notice in a final mold, but just because we're already here sanding everything, I'm going to spend the time to knock it down. It's a really tight little ridge in there. It's pretty hard to see, see an angle of light into it or something, but yeah, it's just, it's a hard one to actually see it all. So let's see if that, yeah, right down in here, there's a little bit of an edge. And because it's on the front of the piece, I'm gonna focus on trying to wear that down just, just a bit more. And then also right over here, there's a little bit of a, a groove that needs more attention. So I'm just gonna get back on that. Okay, so I've just gone over the entire piece with 12 point grit sandpaper. So, right up to that point, um, I'm just gonna keep cycling through them, stop every once in a while, and if I have anything interesting to talk about, I will stop and I will talk about it. Okay, so I've gone over the entire piece all the way to 3000 grit sandpaper. This thing feels super smooth, it feels like polished glass. I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far. So, we're gonna actually get ready to wash this. So, we're just gonna wash this off with some dish soap. Um, just gonna use our hands, we're not gonna use anything abrasive at all, just because we don't wanna risk scratching the surface we just finished. You can also wipe these down with rubbing alcohol, but quite a bit on here so I'm just gonna rinse it with some water lately. Okay so here's the part freshly washed. Looks great. There's still some areas that I might want to touch up once this fully dries. It's a little hard to see while it's completely wet but when it fully dries I'll be able to look at all those small areas and see if it needs any more detailed work and any more fine wet sanding but it looks really good so far. Pretty really happy with it. Okay so that's been a super time consuming process. Really happy that I'm finally done sanding all this always takes a bit and it's a bit of a learning curve when you first start doing the sanding stuff but once you mess up a bunch and figure out what not to do and kind of how to handle the paper it seems simple enough right sanding something but there is a bit of a technique to it so once you kind of get that figured out it's pretty easy to make really nice high quality finished parts that look production once we make the molds here you're going to see all that hard work and time really reflect in the part all right so that's going to do it Thanks for watching. If you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, make sure to put them in the comments below. If you like what you saw today, please make sure to like that video and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video for when we go to make the mold box and do the clay up.